the girls ain't nothing but trouble. Um, and the record did really well. We pretty much toured all over the country. Um, and, and when we did the He's the DJ on the Rapper album, and we did Parents Just Don't Understand, to me, Parents Just Don't Understand and Girls Ain't Nothing But Trouble are the exact same record, just different subject matter. <laughs> Parents Just Don't Understand blew up beyond any of our wildest dreams. And as soon as it blew up, everyone started to say, hey, those guys are from the suburbs. <laughs> you, know, like, I, you know, like, it was really hard, especially being in it, not understanding that the bigger you got, the more criticism you got. You know, and it just, you know, because back then, there wasn't really any crossover. You know, it was kind of like, rap was pretty much, you know, designated for black radio. Um, but not all black radio played. Not at all. You know, but then when the pop station started playing it, you know, the only thing that you realize is, you know, we're selling a whole lot more records, you know, you go a whole lot more places and everybody knows the record, you know, but it was just one of those things that it, that just wasn't cool. Man. And it's kind of like, oh my God, you know, these guys crossed over. Yeah. Before I get into a little bit of the backlash and that kind of thing that sort of happened with Gangster Out, what was, what was your first taste of stardom? I mean, you guys were on MTV every three minutes, it seemed like. You get away from DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. What did that do to you in your head and, and Will? I mean, did you well, change? You, you have no chance, no, no choice but to change. And, but what happens is it's not as much as you changing, it's the way people look at you that change. I remember going to a drive through and pulling up and the girl was like, wow, Jazzy Jeff, what are you doing in the drive through And I'm kind of like, I still like the fries. <laughs> With me, but it's people's perception. Everybody on the other thinks that you eat in different restaurants, that you wear different clothes, that you, you know, you want nice stuff. You know, everybody in the world wants nice stuff. You know, but what happens is everybody thinks your entire mentality changes. Oh, he doesn't eat where we eat, he doesn't like the same stuff that you like. You know, you just have more access to it. That's that's the first thing that, that pretty much changes. But you know, it's you know, it's it, Everything starts to change. You know, the, the, the way people look at you, you know, where you can go. That's the one thing that I don't think I really liked. You know, it was kind of like you wanted to get up and go to the mall and walk through the mall just like you did. Um, and so much of your freedom starts to get taken away. The bigger you get, the less freedom you have. Right? A lot of people don't realize that. I'm fortunate I get to interview people in, in your situation. They all say the same thing, unless they're completely domaniac and they need that attention all the time. Mm -hmm. But your life changes. You just can't be a regular person. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge trade-off. So let me get into uh, the hip-hop game at that time. Things were really changing a lot in hip-hop. and it, A lot of it seemed to change with one record. The NWA record seemed to change everybody's head. A lot, I mean, I was a big fan of uh, things like uh, De La Soul and uh, Paul Quest, things like that. All of a sudden, it was like, in about six months, eh, out of here. Did you guys feel that? Yeah, and, and, but you know what was weird to me is I love the fact, like I remember being on tour with uh, Run DMC, uh, Debbie Fresh and Slick Ray, it was Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince, it was um, JJ Fad, which NWA came out on the road with JJ Fad, EPMP, and Tribe Called Quest. That was a very diverse group of people. That it was 20,000 people every night and everybody had a group. And I thought it was great because, you know, rap was something that I, I looked at. Rap wasn't, wasn't and isn't a form of music. Rap was a, 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 rap was a lyrical form over any kind of music you want. So you could do rap over jazz, you could do rap. So I'm looking at it like, wow, this is great because this is just one big tree with a bunch of branches and we're all on the same tour. What happened is once it started to become very commercially viable, then radio started to dictate what was hot and what was not. So that's, that's when it started to be like, okay, well, this is in and all of the rest of the stuff is out. It's kind of like, it was cool for it to be in. You know, but you don't have to dismiss everything else. Yeah, Tribe Called Quest was always great. Yeah, and, and that just, you know, that started changing. Well, how did that feel?